Welcome back, STEM students, for General Chemistry 2, Lesson 2, Intermolecular Forces. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified with the latest video. Learning Competency Describe and differentiate the types of intermolecular forces. If I will ask you, can you determine the type of intermolecular forces exist in the following? Maybe you can answer some, but not all. Stay tuned to this channel and continue this video. Our learning objectives Identify and describe the general types of intermolecular forces and specify the types of intermolecular forces given the properties of substances. Welcome back to the new normal science. How do you describe intermolecular forces? What are the different types of intermolecular forces? What is the type of intermolecular force existing between hydrogen and oxygen? So these are the questions that we are going to answer. This part of the presentation will give you now the ideas about the intermolecular forces of attractions. Thus, it is necessary to spend a little of your time to understand things about the general types of intermolecular forces and specify the types of intermolecular forces given the properties of substances. There are some forces that exist in a collection of molecules. In a gaseous state, these forces are negligible. The gaseous molecules do not interact with each other. In liquids and solids, the molecules interact and have a great influence on one another. The forces of interaction between molecules are referred to as intermolecular forces or attraction or the van der Waals force. John van der Waals a Dutch physicist, while working on the theory of ideal gas, recognized the existence of some type of weak force on particles that are very close to each other. These weak intermolecular forces, or van der Waals forces, are classified as follows. Dipole-dipole interaction Forces that act between polar molecules in the solid or liquid state. The molecules align themselves where the positive end of one dipole is directed towards the negative end of the neighboring dipole as shown in the figure below. As you remember in our lesson 1, it is explained that intermolecular is the attraction between poles or charges. So this is an attractive dipole-dipole interaction. As you can see, it shows the ends of their poles. We have positive and negative, then the negative is attracted to positive, negative attracted to positive, positive attracted to negative. So that is their attractive dipole-dipole interaction. A very good example of this one is hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. So that is the dipole-dipole attraction between the molecules of hydrogen chloride. So we have the negative charge end of, hyd uh, of chloride and the positive end of hydrogen. So they are attracted with one another. So they are interconnected by this type of force, the dipole-dipole attraction. The presence of dipole-dipole interaction explains the higher boiling point of the polar molecules than a nonpolar molecule of the same molecular weight. The polar character of water explains why other polar substances are readily soluble in water. So remember, in our lesson in chemistry, we have likes dissolves likes. If a polar molecule or substance is put or placed in water, that is, uh, which is soluble, it will become soluble in water. Hydrogen bonding is a special type of dipole-dipole interaction 
which occurs only between molecules that contain hydrogen bonded to small, highly electronegative atoms like fluorine, nitrogen, and oxygen. Examples, we have H2O or water, we have CHCl3 or chloroform, we have NH3 or ammonium, and we have DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. Each water molecule accepts two hydrogen bonds from other water molecules and donates two hydrogen atoms to form hydrogen bonds with two more water molecules, producing an open, cage-like structure. So the structure of liquid water is very similar, but in the liquid, the hydrogen bonds are continually broken and form because of rapid molecular motion. So let's take a closer look of the structure. So this is the structure of water molecule. So as you can see, it's like a closed cage-like structure because of the charges or ends of the hydrogen and oxygen. And they are bonded together by a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond is not a strong bond compared to the other types of intermolecular forces. There. As you can see, it shows the positive and negative charges and the type of bond that exists between these charges. So these are water molecules being shown and being connected by a hydrogen bond. London dispersion forces, which are attractive forces between gases like oxygen and nitrogen which can be liquefied under correct conditions of pressure and temperature. This is an example of a London dispersion forces between iodine. So as you can see, there is a partial charge of positive and a partial charge of negative between iodine atom. So iodine is diatomic, as you can see, and those of the other halogen atoms, they are diatomic. This means that there are attractive forces between the molecules of nonpolar molecules. Dispersion forces act not only between nonpolar molecules but also between all molecules. The force gets its name because of Fritz London. First explain how noble gas atoms could be attracted to each other in 1930. Examples, we have fluorine and iodine. So these are examples of halogens. We have neon and argon. These are examples of noble gases. And other nonpolar molecules like carbon dioxide and methane. Ion-dipole interaction or the force of attraction between ion and polar molecules like sodium chloride in water form an aqueous solution. So the magnitude of the ion-dipole interaction depends on the charge and size of the ions. So the dipole moment and size of the polar molecule. So as you can see, we have the sodium chloride molecule dissolve in water. As sodium chloride dissociates in water, it forms ions. We have sodium ion and chloride ion. The sodium ion is a cation or positive charge, so it's attracted to the partial negative charge of oxygen, while the chloride ion, which is negatively charged or anion, is attracted to the partial positive charge of hydrogen. So together, they form an ion-dipole force or interaction. Now let us determine the worksheet a while ago. I think you are ready to answer it. Let us identify the different substances and their corresponding intermolecular forces. So we have nitrogen. Can you guess or answer? What is the type of intermolecular forces? Very good. It's London forces. Next one, we have aqueous sodium chloride. 
Very good. It's ion dipole. What about helium gas? Very good. It's London forces. What about H2O or water? Very good. It's hydrogen bonding. How about hydrogen fluoride? Yes, it's hydrogen bonding. What about NH3 or aqueous ammonia? Very good. It's hydrogen bonding. What about magnesium bromide? Yes, it's ion dipole because magnesium bromide is ionic and when it is dissolved in water, it will become magnesium bromide or aqueous magnesium bromide. So it will be dissociated in water. It forms positive for the magnesium and negative for the bromide. So magnesium will be attracted to the negative end of the oxygen and bromide is attracted to the partial positive of hydrogen. What about chloride? Yes, it's London. Hydrogen chloride is a dipole dipole type of interaction because of the polarity of hydrogen chloride. And chloroform is hydrogen bonding because of the carbon hydrogen attraction. So that's all for today. I hope you understand the intermolecular forces. See you in the next lesson.